So if you don't know, my name is Steve Miller, and this is Entering Into Space. This is my backyard. see this here <clears throat> this is my uh we as a buccaneer have tom brady and rob gronkowski and there's a worldwide pandemic and there's a dog with apparently like emphysema barking behind me i don't even know what world i'm living in right now so what am i doing well at 384 millimeters of focal length not much i am uh i'm in that no zone because i just don't have the scope yet to get out there and get the galaxies but is that stopping me nope i'm shooting m51 uh it's tiny it's like this wait i crash your head who remembers that anyway it's really small um but who cares i'm going for it uh, I got about three hours on it last night, about two hours on the night before. Seriously, dog, get a SEPA call. And uh, I'm going to try for another two or three hours tonight. So when it gets dark and I get on uh, APT, I'm also going to show you how I'm... Oh, my God. Like, seriously. <laughs> so when it gets dark and the dog goes away and the neighbors stop playing, unless they have flashlights. They could have flashlights and I'm screwed. Uh, I'm gonna go into APT and I'm gonna show you how I'm doing a, um, a new sequencing plan for LRGB. I found a little uh, thing to tick called vertical plan. It makes my job a whole lot easier. Um, and that's about it. I think uh, I'll finish off another three hours tonight on M51 and jump over into Photoshop, process it really quick, and show you an end result. All right, so we're plate solving, which is a good sign. It's always a good sign when you're plate solving. And what we're plate solving on is Arcturus. It's a uh, <clears throat> low, uh, low in the east. Um, kind of in the middle between due north and due south. And I like to try to find a star, a bright star to uh, plate solve on and also plus plus finished. focus on. And then I run my guiding calibration on a star that's uh, kind of in between due north and due south. I seem to get better guiding that way. So we have uh, plate solved on to Arcturus. We're gonna close down, no, we're not gonna hit the south. See, I hate that. We're gonna close down, we're gonna hit the sync button. So that'll basically sync it, as opposed to doing a one star alignment. So let's, let's, uh, let's get our batten off mask on and get this thing focused up. So we're gonna hear a live view. Got a camera tab. It's been at uh, one by one. Do a two second exposure, cause it's pretty bright. And let's see how well this uh, Mead APO 80 millimeter holds focus from last night to, mm, looks pretty good. Well, with a batten off mask, I don't know how I can get any better than that. I'm pretty, uh, pretty satisfied with that. Cool. So uh, let's take that off. And we're gonna go here to gear, objects, deep sky. Scroll down to M51, click okay. And hit go to. 
turning out to be a really clear night. This may be an all-nighter for me. I may shoot this and then uh, try to get some sulfur data on the Crescent Nebula. All right, there it is. And what's really cool about this one is, if you come over here, I've got uh, PhD2 going. And here's my 50 millimeter, or actually my 60 millimeter Astromania. You can see, uh, you can see the Whirlpool Galaxy right there. So let's get that centered up. I'm just gonna let the software do that for me. Uh, what did I do? Cancel, I went in here to Point Craft, got the Point Craft menu. Um, I'm gonna plate solve the current image. Click OK to that. And then I wanna center the field of view. That same image, so M51. Click OK to that. And hit go to plus plus. So in the meantime, let's go here to the camera tab. And um, can we do that? No, nope. we have to wait for it to get the plates on. We're gonna cut all that out. Exposure finished. So it doesn't have to move it far. Basically puts the center of the large part of the Whirlpool Galaxy right in that little circle. So you can see with my field of view, there it went. Um, gonna be pretty small. Go to plus plus finished. Okay. So let's close down point craft. Let's go here to PhD2. Um, probably gonna turn down this exposure just a little bit to gain some contrast. I'm doing a three second loop. And um, we're gonna go here to tools. Let's do an auto star select and see which one it grabs. Right there. And we'll hit the calibrate button. And I have it set up to remember the calibration from the previous night. So let's just run it and see what it looks like over a little bit of time. If we don't like it, we can always go in here to the brain and go to guiding and check clear amount calibration and, and redo that calibration. I don't even really know why I'm guiding. I'm only doing 60 second exposures, but I want to dither. And you have to do, you can't dither without guiding. So, um, I'm also dithering every fourth frame, not every other frame like I do with longer exposures. And I mean, right now, right, right off the bat, right out of the gate, we, uh, a tote, total RMS era. 0.61. I'm cool with that. Let's minimize that. Let's go over here to our camera tab. Let's go to edit. Uh, do the drop down list here. Um, M51. So let me show you the difference here. There was a previous video where I showed you how to repeat this over and over and over. And I would have a stack. I'm talking, you know, this is my luminance filter, my red filter, my green filter, my blue filter. And I would have these stacked, so I would repeat over and over and over. So it would shoot these, and then shoot these, then shoot these, and shoot these, then go back to the luminance filter. And I mean, sometimes I would have 16 to 20 line items here. And, and if I said, you know, I wanna change the exposure length, I'd have to go into each one. And that took a long time. So over here in this top part, there's a don't dither this plan, which I do not have checked. And then there's this uh, little box here. that says vertical plan. Never knew what that was. Um, had a friend on Facebook though, guide me in that direction. So now I only have to do this once. I do, um, I'm doing 40 exposures, 60 seconds, bend one by one. This is my luminance filter. And like I was telling you before, the reason why I want to do some sort of sequence is I don't want to shoot all, I want to shoot an even number of luminance, red, blue, and green each night. Uh, I'm trying to like fake shooting OSC, one shot color. So I don't want to shoot all reds one night and blues another night and greens another night. I want to shoot them all the same. Beetle! Uh, so, so right now I got 40 exposures. And I think I want to run that just a little bit longer. So look, I only have to go into this one and change it. I'm going to run 60 exposures because I think we're going to have some haze. 
So I'm gonna change that count to 60 and hit update current. Go to this one, change it to 60 and hit update current. I'm just updating each one of these line items. And that's gonna be 240 exposures at one minute. And then on the last one, I've got the uh, next plan script command uh, set so that uh, the next plan will be park. So it's going to park the scope after it shoots uh, 240 exposures. So let's click OK to that. Exposure started. And we're shooting 60 second exposures. So you're going to see that it's going to shoot this luminance filter and then it's going to rotate the automatic filter wheel and shoot the red filter and the green filter, then the blue filter, and then repeat the cycle over and over and over until it's completed uh, 240 exposures, which should be done at 1.30 in the morning. And then if it's still clear when I come out here at 1.30 in the morning, I'm gonna put more time on the Crescent Nebula, try to get some narrowband data on it. started. Let's turn that off. So there you have it. Um, so let's bring up our magnifier. Uh, that's funny, we got to bring up our magnifier to see it. <laughs> uh, oh well. I guess that's what this video on shooting M51 through a wide field refractor. Can it be done? What can we see? Is it worth it? Exposure finished. I mean, am I going to get done with this and be like, <laughs> filter change? <laughs> Wait. Exposure started. So sure, there's red, obviously not as bright. Or uh, am I gonna be satisfied with it? Is it gonna be uh, a nice picture that gets good detail of the Whirlpool Galaxy? I don't know, I've never done this. Um, I've only shot the Whirlpool Galaxy at uh, 750 millimeters. So it was a lot bigger. All right, well this concludes that and Next time you see me, we're gonna be at the computer finishing up processing. Uh, hopefully tomorrow night. All right, cool. So I'm gonna take this luminance data and put it down here. I'm like OCD, so I have to line everything up as I process it. So. Let's go into our red, this is our red channel. And when everything comes in, it is, um, the mode is at 32 bits per channel and it's at a grayscale. So while it's still in the 32 bit mode, we're gonna bring this white point over somewhere right about here. My data just seems kind of broken up. So I like to bring it over right about there, right before it gets to where it starts to be a solid line. Look okay to that. <clears throat> so now I want to do all my level stretching in a 32 bit mode. And basically, I'm just watching the background level and, and checking those out my eye. I just want to start to see some contrast uh, between the background sky and the galaxy. Let's go back up here to image adjustment levels. Starting to get a little wider histogram now. And we'll go back here to image adjustment levels. Let's reset this black point right to the bottom of the data there. Some pretty good contrast. So now we're going to compare it to image mode. Switch this over to 16 bits per channel. Uh, change the method to exposure and gamma. Click OK to that. And I'm also going to go back to image mode and I'm going to change this to RGB. And the reason I want to do that is I want to set a color sample point on the background here so I can measure my, keep a check right here on my online levels. 
So I want to, I want, theoretically, I want these numbers when I'm done stretching this thing. I want them to be down to like mid 30s. So let's go over here to adjustment levels. Let's go ahead and push those down. 36. We can bring that back up just a little bit. Click OK to that. Let's zoom in here. That's a pretty good data. A pretty good amount of contrast. Let's duplicate that layer. And you see we've got some light encroachment on these corners. We'll probably end up cropping that out. But I'm not going to mess with that right now. I'll do all that when I combine these channels. So double click on this. We're going to rename this uh, Curves. What did I name that? I named that one Curves. Curves. Pause. Microphone adjustment. Maybe a little bit more. All right. So with the curves, we're going to come here to image adjustment curves, and we're going to try to get a little more separation, a little more brightness in our image here. Man, that was just that was just one little tick right there. So check it out. We got some pretty good detail. So this is our red channel. So let's go over here to layer, flatten, and I'm gonna call that good enough to combine. So let's go to the green channel, and this is the this is the work, man. It's the work of mono. You know. Most of you OSC guys, you've done this and you're done. You're, you're just, you're moving on to the next thing, but not me, not us. We're still processing. Everything we do, we do in threes or fours. Image adjustment level, let's show the 32 bit mode. Let's push it back over. We're just working this data, brightening this thing up. Image adjustment levels. Pull that gray point slider over. process and image adjustment levels bring it right there to the bottom bring the black point over so image mode 16 bits local adaptation choose that to exposure and gamma click OK image mode and change that to RGB and then grab our color sample tool come right here and set a sample so let's push the levels down to mid 30s mid to high 30s right there let's duplicate that layer drag it down let go Rename this one Curves. So we know what we're doing. Let's come here to Image Adjustment Curves. Let's pick it up. And about there, let's pull this right behind the data. A little contrast in there. Click OK. Cool. I like it. All right. Blue. Image Adjustment Levels. Bring your white point slider over. Image adjustment levels. Bring the gray, gray slider over. Be kind of aggressive with it if you want. Image adjustment levels. Let's bring the black point over here. Click OK. I'm just working the data over, working the histogram peak over. So yeah, it's a little more off the left hand side here. So let's bring the gray slider over one more time. Image adjustment levels, and we'll bring the black point slider over right to there. Cool. Now let's change the mode. 16 bits. Exposure and gamma. Okay. Image mode RGB. 
set our color sample tool and let's bring the black point down mid to high 30s we want to try to match that the same if we can click OK to that let's duplicate that layer double click it rename it curves <coughs> All right, and then we're going to come here to image adjustment curves, pick it up, pull it down, bring that down just a little bit. I got a little, got a little crazy with it, a little crazy. Okay, cool. All right, so let's flatten that layer, flat image. Here, our green channel layer flatten image, right channel that's already been flattened. Okay, so now we want to combine these three channels. So, click our red channel, hit Control A to select all, Control C to copy, and Control N will create a new canvas. So, we can click right here. We're going to call this M51LRGB and we want to make sure that our color mode is rgb and we're in 16 bits and we hit create and come over here to the channels go into the red channel and hit uh, control v we'll paste that in so let's grab our green control a control c come back over here to our m51 canvas click into the green channel control v and i always like to come back Turn them on and off, zoom in, make sure nothing's moving, have everything in line. So lastly, let's go to our blue channel, control A, control C, and go back in here to the blue channel and hit control V. And the reason these are lining up so well is because we registered and stacked them against uh, against our luminance frame in Deep Sky Stacker. So everything is registered against one frame. So which means it aligns everything to that one frame. So they all line up. So click RGB and then here is our combined image. And we've got quite a bit of garbage around here. So let's deselect that. So the first thing I want to do is I want to duplicate this layer and I'm going to run gradient exterminator and try to smooth out this background. Um, first thing though, first before the first, we're going to do a new color sample point. Click it right there. And we're pretty dark. So let's go here to image adjustment levels. And let's push all three channels combined up to the high 30s. Click OK. So let's rename this one uh, Gradient. And get our lasso tool. We're just going to go right around the galaxy here. Give it some give it some room to breathe. Come over here to select inverse. We're going to go to filter, RC Astro. And we're going to use this as a plugin called Gradient Exterminator. We're going to start out with our detail and aggressiveness set to fine and click OK. Let's see how that uh, smooths out the background. Cool. I like it. Uh, so select, deselect. See that's pushed us up just a little bit so we can come in here to image adjustment levels. Bring that back down. Right around there, we're not going to be too critical about uh, being even yet. All right, so let's duplicate that layer. Let's call this curves. And we like our black point. We don't want to raise our black point. So when we come in here to image adjustment curves, we're going to anchor that black point, click on the finger tool. Click on our uh, color sampler, come right behind it here, set the black point. If the numbers don't line up because you've uh, clicked high or low of that, 
Just even it up to the bottom number. Let's grab it right here at the data. And we're gonna lift. And you can see what that did. It really made that galaxy pop. But again, remember, this is just our color data. So we're not looking for a lot of detail. We're not looking for um, a lot of contrast. We're just we're trying to get the color to go behind the luminance layer. Um, so let's do that one more time. So image adjustment levels. And oh, levels, not levels. We're going to go to curves. So let's anchor that point. Anchor it on the back side, pick up on the data. Look at that. Look at that. All right, cool. So, got a little bit of noise here. I really don't want to stretch anymore. And so, what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate that layer. We're going to call this uh, BG noise. We're going to use these, uh, we're going to use this method one way and then we're going to use it the other. We're going to use it one way to work on our background. And we're going to use it the other to work on just our stars and our galaxy. So let's duplicate that. And with the BG noise copy, selected top copy, we're going to come in here and filter um, noise, uh, reduce noise. And I've got it set to a strength of eight, preserve details of 26%, reduce color noise. I'm gonna bump that up. We've got a lot of color noise in here. And I'm not gonna worry so much about sharpen detail. I'm gonna click okay to that. So this is a pretty robust maneuver here. So we're just gonna let that churn through. Let's see what we can see here. Probably hard to tell there in YouTube land. Let's zoom in here. These stars look pretty good because we did a two times drizzle on this thing too. So it did reduce the noise quite a bit. The other thing we can do to kind of smooth out that background too is coming here to still with the BG noise copy selected, coming here to filter, camera raw filter. These little galaxies in here, these are cool. And let's draw us a preview. And we're coming here to details. And we'll push that luminance and color noise reduction. And that really smooth the background out. Click OK to that. Cool. But what it did is it smoothed everything, you know. See, we lost some of our detail. And all we want to do is affect the background right now. So let's apply a layer mask to that. That's a little circle right here. Let's go back to this other BG noise copy that we made. You control A to copy it all. Controls or control A to select it and control C to copy it. Let's uh I'm looking around my microphone. <laughs> Let's hold the Alt key down, click into the layer mask, Control V will paste that image in a grayscale, and Control I is gonna invert that image. <clears throat> so with that done, we come over here to Image Adjustment um, Levels. And then we're just gonna bring this over towards the, the data. And you see how we're darkening up our stars and our galaxy? Right about there, and then let's bring the white point over to really whiten up the background because the white part is going to receive the noise reduction, and what's in black is protected. So we'll click OK to that, right click, merge that down, and so now our semi details are back, but our background has been uh, noise reduced. <clears throat> so Let's rename this one to saturation. And let's duplicate that. We're gonna do this backwards this time. So now we want to apply uh, some levels and curves or some levels adjustments and some saturation to our stars and especially our galaxy. We wanna work on some of this color here, get some of this aqua out of it. 
but we don't want to really affect our background. So instead of clicking on this top copy here, we're going to turn that off. We're going to click on the bottom one. And we're going to come in here. We're going to open up the uh, camera raw filter. Cool. Let's draw us a preview so we can see that galaxy a little bit better. Awesome. And let's boost some clarity and really bring out that dust and our vibrance and saturation. And we're going here to our pair, our tonal curve. We're going to boost our lights just a little bit. Bring down our shadows. Just a fuzz. Do a little bit of luminance and color noise reduction. The main thing we want to do is come over here to our um, HSL adjustment tab. And the first thing we want to do is go into here to the hues. And we really want to work on, see if we drop that blue out, see it makes it aqua. We're going to push that blue up just a little bit. We're also going to increase our yellows. And our oranges. And our reds. Just pull some of that aqua out. And drop some of that green out of there. We're going to increase the magenta just a little bit. So now we want to drop some of that saturation out of that blue because it got just a little bit of blue on us. Let's definitely drop the saturation out of the green. Let's increase some of that yellow saturation and orange. So we want to try to get some of this in here. And in the luminance, we're going to adjust the yellow luminance up. Zoom in there just a little bit more so we can see it. The blue is the one that's really affected. So let's bump that blue luminance up and that kind of takes some of that uh, saturation out of it. Cool. So we're going to click OK to that. Let's see what our galaxy looks like now. Definitely got some cool colors in there. We've, but we put color in this whole thing is what we've done. So, I'm going to turn that back on. Same thing. <clears throat> now it's basically the same thing. We've worked on this. So this saturation has, see the difference? Which where we've highlighted. So basically we're going to take this information and we're going to put it in here. We're going to protect the background up in here. So basically the same thing. We go back and we create a layer mask. We grab this layer down here. Control A, Control C. Um, hold A, Alt key, click into the layer mask. Control V with our new data. And Control I to invert it. And basically the same thing. Adjustments, levels, push this over, right about there, let's bring a white. So everything in, that is in white is going to be protected from everything that we're putting into this level. Well, that sounds weird, but it works. Let's click OK to that. And right click, merge down. So basically our background has been protected from the set color saturation that we've done. So this is our luminance, or this is our basically our RGB layer. So we can actually um, close these layers down to give us some room. No, we're gonna leave them alone. So now all we have is our RGB layer and we have our luminance layer. And our luminance layer is where all the detail is. And, and you can tell it's obviously been worked on a little bit already. So let's check the mode on it. 
yes I've done some work on it already and you can see I've done some work on it duh because look there's all the work that I've done on it <laughs> uh, so let's go here to layer and we're gonna flatten this image Yeah, let's duplicate that. Let's go back in here to the camera raw filter again. I'll try to get a little more pop out of this one if I can. Uh, let's draw a preview around here. Cool. And yeah, let's boost our clarity. See that? This clarity tab, man, it really makes an image look good as long as you don't overdo it. Um, and our highlights. Let's go in here to the uh, tunnel curve tab. Boost our lights, our highlights, and our lights. Put a little contrast in there. We can sharpen it just a little bit. We do just a little bit of luminance noise reduction. Click OK to that. Cool. So this is our luminance layer and our background is 36. Our RGB layer has definitely needs some work on the background. So let's go over here to image adjustment levels. And let's double click into this thing. And we got our red set at 35 on our background or our black point. Our green is 35 and our blue is 36. I like that. So I'm going to do this really quick with uh, this selected. I'm just going to come right here. See how I've selected this. I can select the mid level, the, the white point, the gray point and the black point. The black point selected, it's going to go right here to this area. Click it and just like that, it's going to set my levels. Cool. <clears throat> so let's go here to layer. I'm going to flatten that image. And we're going to duplicate that copy. And what we're going to do is we're going to blur this thing out because we're just re we're not really looking to introduce color detail. We just want the color, and that'll reduce some of these stars. So what we're going to do is come in here to filter, noise, uh, dust and scratches. And let's set that at a four. We can move that over. We still want to maintain a little bit of detail. I don't want to get too crazy with this. So I found that like four ish is about the best. So let's look at our on and off. Good. We've minimized some of the stars. We still have some good color detail. So now let's come over here to our luminance data and we're going to say control A, control C. Come back over here to our RGB and control V. Paste it on top. So let's right click or double click it and say Loom. Rename that one Lumen. Double click this one and call it RGB so we can keep them straight. So first thing I want to do is I want to make sure we're lined up. So I want to drop the opacity. And good old deep sky stacker lined us up. All right, cool. So with the luminance layer selected, we're going to come up in here and we're going to change it to luminosity. So you can tell, bam. Got a lot of blue and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this video working through that. This is mainly to see what we can see from shooting a small galaxy with a wide field and what you can definitely tell is quite a bit. Um, you can come in here and maybe drop that luminosity, opacity of that luminosity layer down. Right about there. Let's click on the RGB layer here. <clears throat> or actually the luminance layer. 
We like that. And we can uh, go ahead and merge that down. It's cool. I like it. So one thing we can do in here is we can come in here to uh, our adjustment layers. Let's click this and let's hit uh, selective color. Let's come in here to the blue and this is going to work only on the blue in this image. So you can see how we can kind of drop that blue down some and we can actually lighten it up just a little bit. So it's not so contrasty. So let's look at a before and after. It's looking better. We're just taking the black point. See how that's really adding contrast. We're taking a black point. It actually brightens up the galaxy. Let's drop that cyan down. Take a magenta out of it. I had yellow in there. What are you going to get? Green. We don't want to do that. Cool. Apply that. All right. So let's merge that down. Duplicate this layer. Let's come here to our actions and we're going to run enhanced DSO and reduce stars. Let's see what that does. All right, cool. So let's look at before and after. So I definitely know that action brightens up the background. Let's do uh, see our our levels are mid 40s. Let's go back in here to image adjustment levels. Let's push that down. What about there? 38, 38. I like that. And we're obviously getting this light encroachment from the corners, and we haven't ever done a crop either. So let's flatten this. In here to uh, layer flatten let's come here to oh, not that way let's go over here to our crop tool we're going to crop this right out a little corner garbage instead of spending a lot of time working on it right there image crop so we got some pretty good detail you know for being so wide field. Um, another thing we can do is duplicate that layer and open up our camera filter, which is a filter here. And create a preview. And we're gonna bump that clarity up. See how that really brings our dust lanes out and we're going to bump up our contrast. Actually, let's drop it down a little bit. So I've got a little more detail there in the dust lane. Let's click OK to that. So now let's come up here to this uh, layer mask, add that, highlight over it, and hit Control I, and that inverts everything we just did. So let me come in here and we make sure that our foreground is set to white. We'll grab our paintbrush, use our bracket keys to kind of minimize it down. And then we can just paint in what we just did with the camera raw filter. See, so we're just grabbing these dust lanes right here. kind of adding that detail in grabbing that guy there so let's look at it see the difference and we're leaving that smooth in between the lanes there so pull it back out pretty cool 
All right, I could spend a ton more time working on this thing, and I will. Uh, but right now, what I wanted to show you was uh, how to combine those um, those channels, your luminance, your red, blue, green, in Photoshop. And I didn't do a Deep Sky Stacker, but basically I lied. I brought everything in. I've got other videos on Deep Sky Stacker. You definitely want to choose a reference frame because that saves you a ton of time in um, having to rotate and align everything when you're dealing with all these different channels. So um, I think that's it. Like I said, enjoy it. And don't be afraid to get out of there. Even if you've got an 80 millimeter or 70 millimeter refractor, uh, shoot those galaxies. Shoot M M101, shoot M51 like this one. Um, uh, shoot Markarian's chain if you haven't ever heard of that go check that out it's like oodles of galaxies um, so yeah so don't don't think just because you don't have uh, 1200 millimeters of focal length that uh, you're wasting your time because as you can see we've got a pretty good image here for approximately about two hours worth of data all right until next time I'm Steve this is entering into space and uh, clear skies